Hello everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome to episode 24 of Creating a Space Shooter with Godot. So I think it's about time we get our enemies spawning at the top of our screen. So I'm going to delete my bouncer enemy that I added to my gameplay scene. That way all we have is the player, our HUD heads up display, and the background and all of that. So to start creating our spawner, we're going to add a node to our gameplay scene. And I'm going to add a node 2D. And this node 2D can be anywhere, we're just going to simply name it Spawner. We are going to spawn our enemies at the location, the Y location, of this spawner node. So if you click the spawner and hit the move tool, you can see here it is. We are going to set the Y position, the vertical position of all the enemies we spawn, to wherever the Y position of this is. So I'm going to put this a little bit above my main game here. That way my enemies will spawn right up here in this row. And we'll simply make them spawn at random positions for as long of the viewport or the viewable portion of the screen is. So I'll save that. I'll click on my spawner node and I'll attach a script to it. And I'm going to call that spawner.gd. And I'm actually going to put this in the, I think, yeah, we'll put it in the enemy folder called spawner.gd. And I'll create that script attached to our spawner node right here. There we go. We'll delete everything and we can begin making the spawner. So first things first, we need to spawn an enemy at some certain interval after a certain amount of time passes. So we're going to need a timer to help us out with that. I'll click on my spawner node and I'll add a child node to that. I'm going to add a timer node to the spawner and I'm going to name it spawn timer like so. And this timer is going to be one shot, meaning it won't automatically restart like so. And we'll go back to the spawner script and we'll just get a reference to that spawner timer. So on ready variable spawn timer is equal to dollar sign spawn timer to get that node right there. Next we're going to create a ready function for our spawner. Whenever our game starts we want to do one very important thing. We need to randomize the random number generator with Godot. So by calling this randomize function on the ready of this spawner it's basically just going to randomize the seed that Godot uses to give us random numbers because we are going to be using random numbers to determine what enemies we want to spawn. Also, when our game starts, we need to start up our spawn timer to know when we should spawn something next. So we are actually going to create a few variables up here. The first is going to be next spawn time. This is going to be equal to the time we should wait until we spawn the next enemy. So for instance, we'll start it off at every five seconds an enemy will spawn. And as the game gets harder and harder, will make this time shorter and shorter. That way the enemies spawn more rapidly. So in the ready function, after we've randomized the random number generator, we will start our spawn timer. So spawn timer dot start, and we'll start it for the next spawn time. So when our game first starts, this timer is going to be started for five seconds. Now once that timer ends, we want to spawn an enemy and restart the timer. So I'm gonna click on my spawn timer node. I'll go to the node tab, signals and I'm going to connect to the timeout signal of the timer and I'm going to attach that signal to the spawner node with our spawner script and there's that function right here. So here is where we spawn an enemy and after we have to restart the timer. So once the timer ends we spawn an enemy and we restart the timer that way this will be called again to spawn another enemy. So spawn timer dot start our next spawn time like so. First of all we need to preload all of the enemy scenes that we might be spawning. Remember, in order to actually create an instance of our bouncer enemy or our shooter enemy, we need to use that preload. So I'm going to go to the top of the spawner and I'm going to create a variable preloaded enemies. And this is going to be equal to an array. And we are basically going to preload every enemy scene into this array. And then we'll just choose a random one and spawn it down here. So the first enemy I have is going to be preload and I'll scroll down to my fast enemy .t scene. I also have preload my slow shooter enemy .t scene and I also have preload I believe my bouncer enemy .t scene. Those are the three enemies that I would like to spawn. So we're just creating an array or a list of these three preloaded scenes. So whenever we want to spawn an enemy down here we first have to choose a random preload from this array. So we'll say var enemy preload is going to equal our preloaded enemies, whoops, preloaded enemies, that array at some index. 
So currently, if we have three elements here, it's either 0, 1, or 2. So we have to create a random integer between that range. So we do that by generating a random integer. That's done by calling the randi function. That's just going to return to us a completely random integer number. And to get it between the valid indexes, in our case 0, meaning this one, or 2, meaning the full length of this array, we have to mod, that's a modulus operator just like every other programming language, with however big this array is. So mod preloaded enemies dot size, however many preloads we've added to this array. So since we have three elements in here, this will generate a random number between 0 and 2. 0, 1, or 2. Okay, next we have to actually create the enemy. So I'll create a variable called enemy equal to our enemy preload dot instance. Remember, whenever you've preloaded something, we call the dot instance on it to create an instance of it. So we've created the enemy, now we have to set its position. So we'll set the enemy's position, enemy.position, equal to a new vector2, and it's going to take an x position, which eventually we're going to randomize. I'll just put 0 just for right now. We'll change that in a second. And remember, I said the y position is just going to be the location of our spawner node. So it's going to be the spawner node's position dot y. Now all we have to do is actually add the enemy to the scene so that we can actually see it. So I'm going to call getTree.currentScene to get the current scene. And we'll add a child to that scene being the enemy. There we go. Let's see how this works. We'll run this here, and in five seconds this function should run and we'll get a random enemy. Then the timer should restart and we should get another random enemy in five seconds. So here's the first one. This guy is just one of our fast ones. There's another one. Decided to spawn the same one. Let's see if we get a different one. Nope. Apparently they are all the same. Come on now. There's yet another one. Please tell me we'll get a different one. There we go. We get yet another of our bouncer enemies. And yeah, there we go. That guy's going to bounce. Perfect. There's another one. So our enemies are being properly randomized. Now, of course, they were all spawning at the left-hand side of the screen, and that's because we set the x position to 0. So I'm actually just going to create a variable up here called xpos for x position. And we'll set that equal to a random position between the left-hand side of the screen and the right-hand side of the screen. So we're going to use the rand range function, and this will generate a random float between some number A and some number B. And those are going to be numbers from our viewport. So we have to get the viewport rect again. Our view rect equals get viewport rect. And we'll generate that x position from our view rect dot position dot x, the left-hand side of the screen, to view rect dot n dot x the right hand side of the screen. Then when we set the position of the enemy, we'll simply set it to that xpos variable, a random x position. So now when we run the game, we should see the random enemies appearing at the top still every five seconds. Yep, that one spawned, it looked like kind of in the center of the screen. We should get another. Yep, that one spawned over on the left hand side of the screen. So yeah, they're all gonna spawn at different locations on the top of the screen. This guy spawned a little bit more to the right. All right, I was having a little bit of fun playing and then I just forgot that I had health to worry about. Okay, now we are missing one thing and we're missing the meteors. Now, I actually want there to be a 10% chance of a meteor spawning. So in order to spawn a meteor, we need to preload it, of course. So up here, I'm gonna say var pl meteor for my preloaded meteor, which is going to be equal to preload. And I'll go to my meteor folder somewhere here and load in my meteor.tscene. And whenever this spawn timer runs, after we generate the random x position, I'm going to say, if randf, that's going to give us a random float value between 0.0, .0 and 1.0. So if that is less than 0.1, meaning a 10% chance, right, 0.1, then we will spawn our enemy, our, our meteor, rather, sorry. Else, we will spawn an enemy. So this is saying, so this is going to run approximately 10% of the time, and instead of creating an enemy, we will simply create a meteor. So var meteor, which is going to be an instance of our meteor, equals our preloaded meteor dot instance. We'll set the meteor's position, meteor dot position, equals a vector two, with whatever random x position we had up here, and the y position of the spawner node itself, 
and then we will simply add the meteor to the scene. Add child meteor. There we go. So now we'll have a 10% chance of a meteor spawning instead of an enemy. And we actually didn't name the meteor class. As you can see, our meteor here does not have a class name, which is why in the spawner script, we're getting an error here because it doesn't know what the meteor type is. So I'm actually just gonna leave that untyped. Of course, you could just add a class name to that meteor script and set it here, but this is what I'm gonna do. And that's it. I'm gonna try running the game and I'll cut the video to when a meteor spawns. Well, I died, but a meteor did just spawn. So there we go, we have our meteors having a 10% chance of spawning. And of course, if you wanted a 40% chance of a meteor, you change that to 0.4. Remember, randf returns a number between 0 and 1, which is really useful for generating a sort of random percentage, essentially. Now, I almost forgot, actually, if you go into your spawner script here, when, once we spawn an enemy or a meteor, and we restart the spawn timer, I'm actually going to reduce the spawn time by a certain amount. That way the enemies start spawning faster and faster. So right before we start the timer again, I'm going to do next spawn time, and I'm going to subtract from it like 0.1 seconds. So that way the next enemy is going to be spawned at 4.9 seconds from now, and the one after that will be spawned 4.8 seconds from that one. So just a way to make the game a little bit faster. Now, of course, we don't want this to ever go below a certain number, so we have to clamp it to a certain value. So I'm going to go to the top and create a constant by using the const keyword, and I'm just going to say min spawn time is going to equal 1.5 seconds. So we can't reduce this timer to be less than 1.5 seconds. That way we don't overload the player too much. So after we subtract from the next spawn time, we'll simply say if next spawn time is less than the min spawn time that we specified. In our case, if it's less than 1.5 seconds, we'll simply set next spawn time equal to the minimum spawn time. That way we don't go below that value. Just a way to make the game a little bit faster and more exciting as it goes on, and then eventually it'll hit a limit. You can experiment with these timing values and all to where you get it to feel right. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode.